right so this is where generally this project management proposals come into picture so whenever we are working on project management proposals it is the responsibility of a project management team even because project management team will also be involved in it so i mean because understanding the proposals right so understanding the high level requirements what customer has given so either it can be from the understanding from the business level at the same time technical level because people who are working and who is participating in the pre-sales activity so irrespective of the profile they were coming from because as i told you if we are a pre-sales team so there will be different people right so as people come from functional side will also be in the team people who are coming from the technical team will also be in the team right technical side either it can be from the project management levels or it can be an architect level business analyst levels all that so one should have a detailed understanding over two things one is about business functionality second technicality business functionality means what exactly this business is is this and what is that they were doing so what problem they have right these are the aspects second when it comes to the technicalities to provide solutions to the customer so what kind of solution is something amicable to understand the solutions this is where generally we need to understand the as is process first let's say for example in this segment if you see in this category or in this segment if you have seen this there will be an understanding or there must be an understanding for us to have a knowledge over the existing process what could be the existing point of sale system and how it is performing and where the flaws are so based on that we need to understand what must be the proposed system this is where generally business analyst team do that not by the pre-sales consultants business analyst team do gap analysis gap analysis means what gap we have identified between as is and to be means as is the one which customer has to be the one what is that we are developing so whatever the gaps we have identified between as is and to be is called gap analysis so these sort of things has to be done right so the, because business analyst will give his own outputs from the understanding about as is and to be at the same time, project management people see how much manpower required, how much budget something is uh, preferably acceptable for us to submit financial uh, proposals, all that. At the same time, what must be the strategy? Means application development strategy. Means that's where generally SDLC, right? For example, if you are developing an application, there will be a process like analysis, planning design implementation testing deployment delivery right so these are the stages are there in project you know that right so analysis will be there once we try to understand the problem so followed by the problem understanding we have to come with the project planning means how to develop the project what strategy we want to make in this strategy that's where generally we call it as sdlc models if you remember right you might have heard about models called like waterfall model v model agile right so because nowadays we are following agile earlier we used to follow waterfall models so depends on the requirement of the customer what they have given so what kind of model is something uh, which is feasible that we have to see because models vary because earlier if you remember a customer has given the requirement these requirements were stranded still so you don't see any changes in that further earlier it was but now the situation has changed in such a way if we are the solution providers we are the vendors our solution providers we have to travel with the customer in long run so means every day you will have a connect with the customer what is that they required we need to address the problem so i can say more or less like you are running a parallel activity with the customer business customer is thinking from the functional perspective so being a solution provider we have to think from the technical perspective that's how the situation has drawn 
So every day, every day customer come up with new requirements, we have to address. That's how, so indirectly you are also involving in the business. That's how the situation has evolved. So the reason why whatever the traditional practices of application development we are using may not be uh, may not be that much effective. The reason why we are moving towards agile environment. So project management team has to understand this. How much budget, how much manpower we require. Again, manpower depends on what kind of model are we using. For example, if you follow the traditional practices like waterfall model, all that. So the model as well as the team members will be different, right? So you have project manager, you have a business analyst team members. At the same time, you have... Uh, Architects, again, architects will be different, right? So different, different type of architects we have, right? So again, you have uh, development team, user interface designers, devil testing team, right? So all these people will come into existence. If you follow agile practices, then you don't see all that, right? So because it's confined to a role like a product owner, scrum team, right? So development team. So whatever the expertise these people should consist of, Varying depends on the kind of model we have chosen. So if we have decided, let's say for the example, depends on the requirement what customer has given. We have identified implementing Agile is the right solution. If this is what generally the conclusion we have made, for example, what we have to understand, we have to understand this in such a way, how much manpower we require. Right. So how much expertise? Do we have that expertise or not? If we have expertise and all, what will be the pay we have to pay to them? Right. So if you are not ex if these people are not expertise and all, do we require to train them? Or do we need to hire people from outside? So these are all the combinations we have to see. This is where, especially whenever a proposal document has been submitted. It is always important to have a knowledge over the project management right from the inception level to the execution level. All the stages experience must be there for an individual or a group of people. This is where generally the project proposal, we call it as right. So project proposal documents has to be submitted. This is where project management team will be involved in it. Next, when it comes to the pre-sales consultant, right? If, for example, if we being a pre-sales consultants, we are working on. So we should understand about few things. First of all, if we are a pre-sales consultant, right? So as a pre-sales consultant, again, I'm repeating, this is not something common for all the pre-sales consultant jobs depends on the kind of role because whenever you see the job profiles again i'm repeating because most of the people do this mistake i don't say that this mistake they do knowingly unknowingly happens most of the times due to the ignorance because depends on the whenever we are applying for jobs we have to see the role as well as the industry. If you can go to any job profile website, right, any Naukri or something, you can see. Let's say, for example, there is a job opening for a pre-sales consultant. Let me see. Let me put you this way. Are you there? Right. Let's say, for example, if you are work, if you are applying for a jobs as a pre-sales consultant. Okay, right. Let's say, for example, you are applying for a pre-sales consultant jobs. So whenever we are applying for a pre-sales consultant, whatever the job requirements or the job responsibilities one should perform depends on the kind of role which was given to us and whatever the industry we belongs to. That will wear vary because most of the people ignore that point. Because it, it can be applied for any role, right? So I am not specifying this as a pre-sale consultant role, but any profiles, this is how it is. Let's say, for example, you are a pre-sales consultant for a job opportunity you are applying for. Please do remember if you are if you want to work in pre-sales consultant, the whatever the job responsibilities, skill sets you must perform. Depends on the kind of role, what they were giving to you, 
point number one. Point number two, which industry they belongs to. Let's say, for example, they are from the software services industry. The job, whoever is posted the job to you, if they are from the software services, as a business consultant, whatever the expertise as well as the skill set you must be having is different. When you are comparing with other industry, for example, person coming from advertisement agency or a digital marketing site, they require some pre-sales consultants. Okay, listen carefully because this is where most of the people confuses. Because expertises are not same for all the job profiles. For example, a person who is from the digital marketing or advertisement side, right? So they are expecting, they want some pre-sales consultants, for example. So whatever the skill set they expect, everything from the advertisement side or market research side. That is quite entirely different when you are applying for job opportunities from software services. Understood, Johnny, right? So the reason why the pre-sales consultant job profiles, whatever the skill sets we were going through, these skill sets are completely I don't say completely, at least 30-40% common points are there because proposal documents, bid management, those are all common things, whatever we have discussed and whatever I have given you. But the remaining things varies from the industry to industry. If it's a software industry, the skill sets will be different. If a person who has applied, who has posted a job profile, job if they are from the digital marketing side or from the manufacturing side or from the pharma retail side or from the engineering side, whatever the skill set they want, a pre-sales consultant must perform will be different, right? So they want an additional skill set from their industry perspective, right? So you have to be very clear. Now, whatever I am expecting to you or whatever I am explaining you as a pre-sales consultant, assume that this is from the IT services side, okay? I am giving this disclaimer to you before I am going to explain this. Now, if you are a, if someone is from the pre-sales consultant point of view, if they are from the technical side, for example, okay, if they are from the technical side, because all the people may not be uh, technical uh, people, right? So some people may be technical people, some people may not be technical people. So if a person is from the technical side, usually they need to have a knowledge over conceptual solution design. Because normally, person who is coming from the technical background will have this knowledge, conceptual solution design. Person from the technical side, I'm saying, right? So if a person is not from the technical side, then it's different. But usually if a person coming from the technical side this is where generally they have to understand about effort estimation. Effort estimation. Effort estimation means how much effort will it be taken for us to complete the particular task or a particular project. So this effort estimation again depends on few conditions. One is about the kind of technical solution we are providing. The kind of technical solution means what kind of solution are we about to provide? About to provide. This is where technical solution that we need to consider. Of course, to whom are we interacting again? It varies, right? So to what kind of people are we interacting all that, right? Second thing. Second, this technical solution again connected with functional solution, right? In what way or what kind of functional gap are we identified and filling, right, filling, right? So this is where functional solution. So if you want to provide a technical solution, 
technical solution again depends on functional solution. What is that we are going to give? Next, again, this functional solution again was interconnected with the execution methodology. The execution Right? So it depends on the execution methodology. Means what kind of methodology are we following? Right? What kind of methodology are we following in? Can you please check from your end, uh, Jani? Because I have connected from mobile data. It's all clear here. So please check from your side as well, because uh, I've connected from mobile data. So there is no destruction as far as uh, Wi-Fi. If it is a Wi-Fi, then it's a different thing. Please check from your end also. Okay, right. So what kind of methodology are we following, right? So because execution methodology, it can be as I told you, right? So what are the development life cycle methodologies we are following? Either it can be waterfall, it can be V model, it can be incremental, it can be iterative, it can be agile, right? It can be of anything, right? So what kind of methodology are following? This is where generally project execution methodology. Again, this execution methodology, again, interconnected with project planning, right? So this is where project plan consists of everything. So what and how are we planning to develop the project. This is where generally project planning come into picture, right? So project planning come into picture. What kind of project, what kind of project are we going to develop? Project planning, everything comes under this. This is where generally project planning, usually project planning will be prepared by the project management team with the help of other team members, all that. Next, followed by this team. What and how much team members require for us to develop the solution. So if you want to provide a solution for a customer, for irrespective of the technology, irrespective of the domain are we coming from, if you want to have an effort estimation, bring a pre-sales consultant team should have a knowledge over the first thing about technical solution. Again, depends on, again, as I told you, right? So if a person coming from the technical side, they'll understand. Otherwise, okay, fine. So technical, because there will be technical architects will be there. Technical architects will be involved. So technical solution, this is where, what kind of technical solution are we about to develop? Again, this technical solution depends on what kind of application it belongs to, right? If it's an existing application we are developing, we are migrating, then the approach is different. If we are developing an application from the scratch, then approach is different. So technical solution is one aspect. Again, technical solution depends on the functional solution. What functional your solution you are giving. Let's say, for example, if you have taken this by considering these points into consideration, assume that the solution what we have identified, for example, solution what we have identified, identified, what we have identified is a cloud-based point of sale system. For example, this is where generally cloud solution is, right? So cloud-based, uh, Developing a cloud-based point of sale system would be the ideal choice based on the solution expectation what customer has by considering the business goals and solution what customer is expecting. Assume that developing a cloud-based point of sale system is what we have identified. This itself is called a functional solution. functional solution. This is where generally we call it as functional solution. We call it as a functional solution. Now, when you talk about functional solution, what is functional solution here? By considering all these, 
we have identified developing a cloud-based POI system would be the ideal choice so that even though they're expanding their business in different places, what is that they required? They make sure they must be having a proper internet connection. That's it. So if they have a proper internet connection, everything will work properly, right? So this is where generally we have understood. This is where functional solution come into picture. Now, if you want to develop a functional solution, what is that they required here? This is where I have told you, this is where this technical solution is interconnected with this. Why? Because if you want to develop a technical solution, what is that you have to consider? What kind of cloud service provider? We have to opt. What kind of services we have to take, right? Either it can be infrastructure as a service, software as a service, or platform as a service. <clears throat> now, so what type of service we want to Uh, we want to uh, we want to get from the uh, cloud service provider. Okay, what was that again? Is it a public cloud service? Is it a private cloud service? Is it a hybrid cloud service? Okay, so this this aspect we have to consider. Next, if it's a migration based project, migration based solution, what must be the strategy and approach? So these are all the aspects we need to consider when we are we are working on the technical solution. So that's the reason why if we are a precise consultant, expecting to provide a technical solution from the customer, understanding our conceptual solution design is important. This conceptual solution design required for us to have a effort estimation. On what basis effort estimation is designed? Effort estimation designed on the technical solution, what we are giving? This technical solution is interconnected with the functional solution. What is that are we going to develop? To understand the functional solution, we must be having an interconnect with the, what kind of execution methodology we have to be taken into consideration. Depends on the requirement of the customer. So if you want to develop an execution methodology, what must be the project planning? Depends on how much timelines do we have? What is the budget which is interconnected with it? All that. Next, to have a project planning, what must be the expertise of our team we have? So these aspects we need to consider whenever we are working on the effort estimation. So if we want to be a pre-sales consultant or whenever we want to work as a pre-sales consultant, subject to the expertise, as I told you, if are from technical side, because some organizations want a person should have a technical knowledge. If a person is not coming from the technical knowledge, at least we need to have a knowledge over functional side of the uh, functional side of the customer. Either it, it may be from POS side or retailing side, it can be from banking, it can be for healthcare, it can be from insurance, or it can be of any other domain. Because uh, that is a different thing, right? So because how to inculcate it, that is that is a different thing, right? So that, that sort of knowledge is required. Next execution methodology, project planning team, these will be given by the other project management team members and all. So this is where generally pre-sales consulting and how we initiate is what generally one should understand, right? So if you want to be a pre-sales consultant, this is what an overall understanding. First, you have to be good with. Is it clear? Understood, Johnny? <clears throat> 